Welcome to our Friday podcast and our podcast generally, um, Find Your Inner Voice. We are the vocal coaches from the Vocal Studio Singapore. We'll be talking about vocal coaching, life around it, and a lot more. Thank you very much for uh, having us today. Um, today we have a discussions with Coach Hannah and uh, we'll be sharing some more uh, interesting vocal tips for you guys um, that Coach Hannah would like to share with you to help you out a little bit more to understand um, some tips and tricks that you can eventually do for a particular issue that, that you have while you're singing. Thank you very much Coach Hannah for um, being with us this morning, this afternoon. Um, how are you? I'm good. Thank you, Boyana, for the nice intro. I'm very good. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, this is a new angle we are trying, actually. I just didn't realize it, this like particular angle. Now, I don't know whether you see it, but you are above me. So like you are on the top and I am on the bottom. Yeah, but for me, it doesn't seem like so. For me, it seems like I'm front. I think you can change the setting, right? Um, I, I think, yeah, because we're now recording, we cannot really change it. So let's just continue with this and see how it goes. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, so today is another week of us sharing a little vocal, you know, like some of our, our experiences and tips for your vocal skills, for your singing yeah. skills, right? So you can, you can improve upon it. Last time it was interesting because it, it was about vocal riff, right? How do you do the voice effect and riff and runs and vibrato? It was quite nice. So if you're interested, you can check out on that. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah, today I wanted to talk a little about rhythm okay yeah mm -hmm. so we've done enough i think we've done um covered uh quite a lot about how to build the basics the voice right and also how to do the right breathing uh what are the importance of scale exercises but now we are going into more into okay what is rhythm why does it matter in singing um so recently I've had some students who come and then they, they try out the songs, the new songs that they want to learn. And these are the students who are already pretty good in, you know, singing the melody lines. When they sing, it's very beautiful, uh, especially the students who are into opera style or like a musical, Broadway musical style. If they want to sing, like uh, there was one with music of the night. Mm -hmm. So it was very nice and very good to hear. And that student wanted to switch over to a little more modern style, which was a song, If I Could Tell Her, by Dear Evan Hansel. And it's a faster song. It follows a contemporary rhythmic style. And he was totally lost because he felt like he didn't know he was singing the right tune and melody, but something was so off. But it didn't have the right feel. Um, yeah, so we needed to break it down to understand where, you know, that feel of being off or being in, not very, you know, appropriate or in the right place come from. And a huge part of it was obviously like rhythm. Yeah. Yeah. Rhythm. So what <laughs> generally we, we will for sure have uh, you, you breaking down into many details and uh, mm -hmm. more detailed discussion. But what is your general overview on rhythms? Um, you know, what, what what is it? Is there one single thing that one can do that it's up to from, from your own, you know, course yeah. of teaching? What is it that you understood when you were teaching rhythms? What is it that students have to do generally or like one single tip? that they do what is it that 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 makes it makes them better with rhythm so i think in um rhythm rhythm is basically based on timing right mm -hmm. but in that timing it doesn't only mean oh it is an indicator of what timing you should start singing it is not only that it's also about the duration of the note it is also the duration of the rest well, how much you're going to rest, how much you're going to, you know, hold the note. And there is also this aspect of how much F 
accent you're putting on certain notes mm -hmm. or on certain beat. So uh, you have to think maybe a little more in those, uh, you know, in different levels. If you're a very basic level, uh, beginner level singer, ba what you need, the first thing, as the first thing was you need to catch the pulse and the beat of the music, right? So if you're singing, um, uh, for example, if there is like, I'm yours, Jason Mraz, na, da, 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 right? And then you have to know first the beat of it in order for you to catch the, like, uh, the complicated layer of the rhythm, right? So when you listen, always uh, the students who are missing the beat, I always tell them to start with tapping, listening to the music, so we start tapping and you will find actually this is not just ongoing tapping because there is a cycle of maybe one, two, three, four. And somehow it feels like it goes back to one, two, three, four, and it repeats. So then it creates that like, you know, four and four um, mirror. And so they find that one, where is a one? When the beat is consistent, Three, four, a one, a two, three, a four, a one, two, three, four. So this is what what we do, and um, in the lesson, and then it's sometimes it is snapping, and then after that you have to also move your body a little bit, because it has to be physically felt in your body, and after that, bam, 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 bam. Bam, 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 then you can sing it. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Do yeah. you they can follow this? They can follow. Do you have any issues following this? How do you find that? There are some students who are ha also having the, the issue of following that too. Uh, yeah. So, um, in that case, you might want to break it down. So, mm -hmm. if you, it's hard for you to follow one, two, three, four, then make a filler, you know, you have to make fillers by saying N. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and having those fillers help you to stay consistently with um, the, the beat. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. It's always the first step is having the right uh, understanding of the basic beat of the music okay that's cool yeah, yeah very good that's an excellent tip thanks for sharing it i think students will really appreciate it yeah um and and then also so then you are moving on it's it's for the more easier level right but then if you're moving on where is the problem coming from now you get to you start to be confused because some music doesn't follow this pattern so it'll be easier if everything is going with a beat then it'll be nice but many times the actual melody is sung not on the beat but then off the beat yeah so right? what do you do how do you do with that so that's where we are like having all this like confusion like frustration so uh, so now we have to go into practicing a little bit of the offbeat, right? So okay. we did one and two and three and four and now you can use those fillers to practice um, the offbeat feel. What mm -hmm. I mean by that is instead of one and two and three and four and now you can go into one and two and three and four and and two and three and four and right so then you, you get that that very different feel so then uh, versus uh, now you have it now you switch it to uh, 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 mm -hmm. right one and two and three and four and four 
and so that's the exercises that you can okay. practice like all the accents go on the end right mm -hmm. okay yeah. that's interesting yeah that's a good it's a good way of uh, putting it yeah good so it seems like the fillers help a lot right mm -hmm. yeah how about what, what what okay say say you some students practice and listen and write they, they get it right and things like that. But the next time they come in there, don't get it right. So what do you advise them? Uh, so always listen to the song. When you do that, uh, if, you, if it's hard for you to follow the beat, slow down the music. You can, you know, YouTube allows you to slow down the tempo of the music. And then as you slow, when, once you slow it down, find the steady beat. Mm -hmm. Right? One, two, three, four, one two, three, four. And then it, after that, you are on top of it, you are finding, you know, like the, the um, let me apply a, a melody. Like what would be a good song for that? I just did. Mm -hmm. I think, you know what, for me, huh? um, there is a lot of like little things that one can do depending on, you know, their own personal, you know, uh, rhythm skills right yeah and level, uh, currently yeah but you know over the course of 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 uh, my studies in music i only realized that the rhythm in that matter does not stay with you unless some people have a natural actually very good sense of, of rhythm right mm -hmm. but um, just like drummers do i think um uh, people have to practice yeah definitely you need to have practice is because you have to internalize that rhythm right i mean you can get you can show them a lot of exercises that are super fun and very good uh in lesson but it, and if they if they go back home and don't practice then they're going to lose the sense of you know because it's still not in, they're, they're still working on their on their rhythm skills right that yeah. it, it actually requires a lot of practice just like dramas when they sit down and they practice they you know yeah. their rhythms they have to know it's not because they don't know how to play the rhythm because they have to, to get really really good in that so that it's practice it's a consistent practice so um, i guess when you give them all these skills mm -hmm. and little exercises not the skills part and the exercises that they have to do all they have to do is just when they have some time off they have to go home and practice the same yeah because the body then remembers right mm -hmm. It's do. very important because like, it's not only, you know, the singing is actually, you come, you, you have to process the music that you are listening to. And after that, you have to produce your own sound. So it is a two-way process all the time. And you have yeah. to be, that's why you have to yeah. be very physically, instantly, yeah. you know, like immediately connected to the, the beat and then the rhythmic part. That's, and it takes time for you to. Yeah. And the chord. Because it's a sensation that you have to just yeah. go with, right? Yeah, your body has to accept that rhythmic pattern that you're practicing. So really uh, using your body parts, right? Whether there's a clap, whether there's a tap, whether there's a snap, or that, the, you know, a lot of the musicians, they have this like drum movement to feel the beat, right? And then taking the steps. Um, so that's the thing uh, I would definitely recommend for you to catch it, catch the beat. And on top of it now, you're building uh, whatever now you need to build. First, start with easy songs that fall on the on the beat, okay? The melody line fall on the beat. And after that, if it's off the beat, then you have to know, okay, how does this work? Maybe a little more complicated beat rhythm patterns will be instead of ta, 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 ta. Now we go into ta, 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 ta,
yeah 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 that's that's good yeah but obviously yeah all of this uh, it's fun it's very fun yeah, i, I think very fun. it's very fun to be practicing rhythms yeah so yeah. how is your um what else can we can we share about rhythm how is your i, I personally love rhythms <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm very, I'm very fascinated. Many, many years back, when I was at in, at uni in London, I started lessons. Yeah, with one of my musicians that I worked with, and he was playing the congas, and we started off a few lessons because I really was rhythm fascinated so much I mean, because I come from a region that it's yeah. very rhythm involved, right? And for us, rhythms was like this is what we do for life you know we just wake up and we do bizarre rhythms such as seven eight nine eight and all that right so we started practicing um and i realized that this is certain well you need to have a lot of focus though yeah. your focus cannot go anywhere else mm. when you're practicing rhythms as a drummer for instance mm. and as a conga player to say mm. that's what i learned uh and i learned that it's very fun that you have to actually this you know, in the rhythms, there's a lot of music as well because you have to produce different sounds as you play. Yeah. You know, as you as as you're doing the congas, there's if I'm not wrong, there's seven different sounds that you have to do, mm. and each sound has your hand has to be in a particular position to produce that sound. Mm. It was lovely though, but then I realized, oh my god, this takes a lot of practice yeah. uh, and a lot of um, focus and concentration. So maybe perhaps some kind of um, tip that we can give students is to be focused when they are, you know, to be very, very aware of, of their own body and to be very much in the song mm -hmm. that they are doing, you know, try and concentrate uh, 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 as, pos as, as much as possible, you know. Yeah. We all have a different level of, com on, of of ability to focus, right? Not everyone has that. That's also something that goes in many levels, right? But we need that concentration, focus, and yeah like like being very very vigilant and like very aware right really like using your full you know like yourself right like your mind your you know your feel your body everything has to go into this and like really so the thing is for this conga players they're using their hand and then they are making different kind of attack right to produce different kind of sound same thing i think also goes for the voice uh when you want to create different rhythm and the color right uh you like add a little more diversity a more vibrant feel like more life feel then also uh, when when we sing, sometimes they some students sing in the right timing, but then still it feels very plain. That's because they don't put in, you know, um, the different qualities of voice for the yeah. different rhythm component, right? So it's um, some somebody was singing like take me. There's this song called "Take Me to the Matador." Take me to the Matador. There is this song. Um, and then he's a very beautiful singer, but then somehow it felt a little bit plain when he sang, take me to the matador. And right, it doesn't have that feel. So what we worked on is, okay, remove all the lyrics. Think about only the sound. Remove the meaning of the lyrics. Think about the sound now. And then if you use T, ta, the, ah, uh, this very simple syllable, how would you uh, sing this to really show that feel, express the right rhythm, uh, right? So then, da, 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 ba, da, 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 da. so it's now a little more scatty, but that's a really good way for him to just capture the rhythmic side of it. And also that comes with a nice emphasis, accented, right, feel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. really, we have to be more creative in trying to, you know, express and learn the rhythm by maybe sometimes getting out of um, singing in our comfortable way of singing with the lyrics in front of you, right? Uh, and just go by the that flow that you have in mind. We have to completely immerse ourselves in the in the music and then imitate it. It's a really fun sounds to create. 
yeah, it's it's cool. Rhythms rhythms are great. I had a one one at one point in time, one student of mine told me, "Oh, I cannot do that. You're a very rhythmical singer." That was really funny. I laughed because you know, see how people perceive you sometimes. You know, you're rhythmical. You're not rhythmical. Yeah. Um, I think you just have to. You know, rhythms are very connected to that kind of, you know, wanting to do things that sort of, you know, passionate love for music that we have or we don't, so, you know. So if you add a little bit more of feeling to to your um, to your songs, that might also help you out with the rhythm uh, in, in, in ways and that can create some dynamic, but of course that's more on the melodical side. Uh, yeah. Very good, very interesting. Uh, what else can we say about rhythms? Mm. I think so far, so the thing is first, uh, catch the right beat, right? And then on top of it, build uh, your vocabulary on the variations of the beat. So it becomes now offbeat. Uh, maybe if you're interested in learning more about the syncopation, you can go and search more about it. So build the layers uh, in order for you to sing in rhythm. And when you sing, uh, when you apply your, uh, yeah, the, the song and learn the, the rhythm from your song, um, try to imitate and really catch the sound first if you feel like you're missing the rhythm. And then after that, once it is there, uh, then you can rebring the lyrics and try to express those rhythm um, qualities by singing with the lyrics. Uh, other things, other things that mm, we, we can talk a little more about the rhythm. Hmm. Mm. Classical musicians, I don't know whether there's a, some people believe that, you know, like for the classical musicians, it's very hard for them to convert to jazz. And a large part of it is, I think it's also because of the rhythm difference and then the, how is, it is placed. Yeah, well, that's... Um, it's, well, many aspects will be there, but I think like a big part of it also could be that. Uh, yeah, it's uh, actually really... It depends how you look at it. Um, if you are a very, you know, serious singer in the classical music realm, then you will be required to to have like really strong rhythm skills, regardless of the fact that we're not really using them when we sing uh, any classical pieces. When when we sing opera, we are very focused on uh, singing melodies, making a nice solid tone, making it loud or not loud, giving all sort of different techniques that are required. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is, the rhythm is actually there, but it's very connected to the breathing, you know? So breath, so the, the word goes a lot more to breath support, mm -hmm. so that that gives you the ability to have a good rhythm, rhythm, mm -hmm. rhythm uh, skills when you're singing classical music. So it goes, it's very, very connected to the bread. There's no, uh, usually we don't really practice, you know, like in popular music, we don't have this, this variety of, of, of uh, you know, exercises and how to get there because in the end of the day in popular music, there's so many different genres, right? Yes. And that therefore there's so many different rhythms. Yes. So we have to have these exercises and ways to, to, to improve our rhythms in popular music. Whereas in, uh, in classical, it's the other way around so we don't really we have very singular one 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 genre so which which does not really require for you to you know be so rhythmical yeah i think more you know when you think about the aria or like the, the classical music performance it's really about delivering the resonance of the voice and making nicely flow lyrically um rather than uh being on the right time and sync you know um uh so that is the difference i mean those he, both has like very good beauty right like i i get the goosebumps by listening to the the sopranos or the classic music like the singers perform uh but now if you are talking about you really doing the contemporary modern pop music and those genres yeah then you will you will need to delve a little more into okay how this does this rhythm really contribute to the music 
what kind of you know like energy does it derive from it and be interested and then get to know a little more about it and then really break it down break it down break it down go slow go fast go slow go fast yeah yeah yep and practice 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 yeah <laughs> always <laughs> all righty um any song that you're doing that you're teaching these days that might be interested uh, interesting for the students to look at um to learn the rhythm mm -hmm. various different rhythm uh one one that i just introduced if i could tell her and then there is also uh what did i do yeah, of course. I mean, there's I have a variety of students. We have a lot of variety of students with a variety of different songs. Yeah. Um, that is all very, very different one from another. But if by any chance, you know, you want to improve your rhythms, um, hope this can, you know, give you a little bit of hope and, and, and some kind of, you know, wish to, you know, uh, indulge a little more into rhythms. Yeah. And we can help you out with that. Uh, yeah. Okay, I think that's uh, that's that's probably around the time that we have to yes. sort of say bye to you and thanks very much for listening to our conversations. Um, thank you, Hannah, for sharing this this rhythm uh, talk, this rhythm conversations vocal tips in this case for, for how to get a you know uh, better with with rhythms when it comes to singing, right? Um, okay, if you uh, wanna see us and listen to us next time. We'll be sharing another interesting topic for you all. Um, and thanks, Hannah, again for, for this. And um, hope everyone has a very beautiful afternoon, evening, or whatever. And we will see you next for our next podcast. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.